Welcome to Treasure Coast Community Health. With seven locations to serve you better, we have a dedicated staff. And now, here's your host, CEO Vicki Soule. Well, hello there, and welcome to Community Conversations. It's so nice to be back here every week with interesting guests from around our Indian River County community. Sometimes medical, sometimes dental, sometimes behavioral health. Gee whiz, could that be because that's what Treasure Coast Community Health loves to provide for everyone in our community? Could be. Um, but we also have great interactions with a lot of support services around our community because we know that health is a combination of a lot of different things coming together to make your life better. And certainly we have a very valuable resource in our community, and that would be the Senior Resource Association. They've been around for a very long time, and they do wonderful work for seniors. And today I have lots of questions about that, no matter how long I've been here. So Shauna Callahan, who is the Operations Director for the Senior Resource Association, she handles all the social and feel-good things, not the transportation. That's Chris's area, <laughs> she told me. Um, but everything else, um, Shauna knows about and is a fearless leader and advocate for. So welcome, Shauna. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, it's my delight. Tell me about the kinds of programs that are sort of under your umbrella, as it were. Sure. So Senior Resource Association is the uh, lead agency in the county. We take care of the majority of the senior-oriented social services programs and get most of the government funding for that, as well as donations and private pay. So we run, everyone's heard of Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. So we run the Meals on Wheels program. Uh, we have Day Away program, which is essentially a licensed adult daycare. It's a daytime facility for people who shouldn't be left home alone during the and, day. And you guys have been running that in two locations for some years now, yes, haven't you? Yes, we have. Yeah, yeah. I, for as long as such a thing was such a thing, I'm pretty sure. So we're probably <laughs> going on about 47 years at this point. Oh, my point. goodness. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I like so. the Day Away title, though. Oh, yeah. It's, it's you know, adult daycare. It's like adult day health care, but it sounds mm -hmm. like daycare. So we, you know... <laughs> It's not the away. point. It's right. activities, and we help people who need accommodations to participate so that their loved ones, caregivers, can go on with life. And so it's a day away for everyone. It is for everybody. Exactly. That's wonderful. We also do um, guardianship, public guardianship in the county for people who don't have someone who can take care of them and they have no capacity, mental capacity, to take care of themselves. Um, we'll take care of them and make sure they have good lives. And then finally, we do the um, in-home services and case management using government funds. These are services we put into the homes of seniors to keep them independent mm -hmm. and keep them in their homes as long as possible. So any children of seniors, if they had questions about how their folks were getting on or one or the other, because oftentimes I would imagine you're helping widows or widowers, not combined couples more often than not. Um, if they if they were out of town, but hearing us on iHeartRadio, could they call you and, and talk to you about certain concerns? Absolutely. And actually, we fend a lot of those calls. Um, okay. Sometimes it'll be, I came and visited mom and dad, and I'm worried about what I saw. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just can't come visit. Uh, one of our most popular services is uh, children setting up Meals on Wheels, because we'll be knocking on their parents' door five days a week and making sure they're okay and reporting back. Okay. If there's concerns. And so where would they contact you for those kinds of questions? Shana? They can call our general number. Um, okay. So that's 772 uh, 569-0760. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be directed from there according to which services they're looking for. Generally, we'll have them talk to a case manager or someone who can kind of get to where we're needing to go to figure right. out what services are appropriate and then move on. And I'm sure you have a website if they want to sort of pre-screen the kind of services and offerings. Mm -hmm. um, nobody likes to call and ask silly questions. Right. So what's your website? It is uh, seniorresourceassociation.org. Okay, that's easy. Yeah, it's Senior long, but it's long. spell it just like it is in the dictionary and you'll get there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so today um, we're really here to talk about each of those programs, mm -hmm. but the one that seems to be most urgent um, as we have watched all of our volunteers stay home, which is very appropriate, it is. Um, but it still has left a lot of agencies like yours without their um, well-used um, volunteer corps. Correct. So let's talk about Meals on Wheels. Yes. Yeah, so with um, COVID, Meals mm -hmm. on Wheels grew by 70%. 
Wow. Uh, that was just, there was an increased number of seniors who were suddenly homebound, mm -hmm. uh, shouldn't be going to the grocery stores, those type of things. So we increased our numbers, but we didn't necessarily increase our staffing or our volunteer numbers. Probably your volunteer numbers went down. They did. Um, uh, quite a few of our volunteers are of retirement age. Mm -hmm. So some of them made that decision. Um, For their health concerns. Correct. And mm -hmm. then we also deal with the snowbird seasonal thing where mm -hmm. they left because it was, you know, that time of year where you leave mm -hmm. and... And they couldn't come back or didn't feel comfortable coming back. So, And there's still that, a lot of that. There is. So we are actually really struggling. Uh, the Meals on Wheels model works because of volunteers. Uh, without volunteers, we have to send paid staff. When you send paid staff, the price per meal goes up, and that's less people that you can feed. Mm. So uh, we added 17 routes, which means every day there's an additional 17 routes going out into the county. Each of those routes might have 10 to 15 people on them. Okay. So I need 17 volunteers additional every day, and wow. we have less than we were when we started. So we're really putting the call out to people. We're really hurting Fridays. Fridays are bad, but we'll take you any day. Any day you have, we can put you to work. It's about a two-hour commitment. Okay. Uh, we'd really appreciate help feeding these homebound seniors. And, and the two-hour commitment, does it have any flexibility you know, is it 11 to 1 or 10 to 12 or? Right. So we're supposed to deliver the meals between 10 and 2. Okay. So any time in there, if you can pick up and get that route down, you know, within those time frames, that's perfect. Okay. And is there any special training that you give folks? Yes. So we'll, uh, we'll have to do a background check. Um, and then after that, we do two levels of training. One is a sit-down orientation where you learn about seniors, what we do, those type of things. Could you and Zoom call that? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, okay. we could. And then the next one is a ride along where it's just your first route. You'll oh, okay. go along with someone else, either a very well experienced volunteer or a staff member. Okay. And learn the learn the ropes. We have a mobile software we use on cell phones now and, and you'll learn how to do change of condition reporting. So if oh. you see something that concerns you, you can report to us live and we'll get it back in the office and take care of it so you can move on to your next client. And then from that change of condition report my assumption is that your staff members who should not be out on the road but doing these things would be calling to yes. notify relatives if there was a concern. Absolutely. We have a whole protocol for it. So it'll go through the management, the staff, the management. It might even go up to our case management services, depending upon the client and the needs. And we always contact emergency contacts, or if they don't have any, then we try to put in more services ourselves, those kind of things. Well, that's a pretty important role then. It's not just delivering meals to the door. It's really about, are they coming to the door? You know, are it's actually they doing mostly well? about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, are they it's doing well. It's the check. I mean, the nutrition is important. And for a lot of our clients, it is their only meal of the day, which is sad because it's only that one third of their really dietary sad. requirements. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's about someone checking on you, ringing the door, making you stand up, making you come to the door, talk to us about what's going on. Um, and we've saved lives. We found people who have fallen, uh, people who are hugely depressed, and we've been mm -hmm. needing to do something about it, uh, those type of things. And So do your people go in the house? Is this a doorway conversation? With COVID yeah. right now, <laughs> so I'm asking. They, things have changed. <laughs> so we ask that you don't go in the house and you keep six foot different distance and there's PPE involved, you know, you wear your mask and those type of things. Um, there are a few clients that just can't get to the door. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, we'll put those instructions on the route. And if you're uncomfortable with that, those ones we send staff mm -hmm. who are better trained. But, you know, some of some people, some of our volunteers are healthcare providers and those type of things, and they're not as concerned and they know how to do that safely. So whatever you're comfortable with and as as much distance as we can give to take care of them is what we're trying to do. And what about route preferences? If you live, for example, in South Vero, would you be assigned to go to Felsmere, or could you, if a route was available closer to where you were at, to save on your own gas and time? Is that possible? Yes, you could request. You could okay. request, um, and they'll try to accommodate you as best as possible. It doesn't mean that we're not going to call you on your off day and beg you to take a route that's in Felsmere, <laughs> but we always tell our volunteers, just tell us no, so we can go on to the next one and beg the next one. So, you know, we don't uh, mind no's. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it is such an important thing to do. Um, I know my in-laws had Meals on Wheels, and it wasn't the same as home cooking. And I think now even it's not five hot meals a day. Is we it? did. We've gone back. So oh, in COVID, we went down to like delivering once a week and the rest uh -huh. were frozen. And then we had to go out and buy a bunch of microwaves oh. for seniors who didn't have microwaves. And then and then some of them just 
physically um, yeah. weren't well enough to even do that. So we still right. had some that we would heat up ourselves and staff would deliver. Uh, now we're back to five days a week, one hot meal, frozen for the weekends. Um, and it's uh, it's been going really well, except, like I said, with 17 more routes and not having enough volunteers, I now need that five days a week. And do you, when I last talked to you months ago, um, you had a wait list for Meals on Wheels as it was. Yes. Yeah, so the wait list has started up again. We were able to take a lot of people off wait list um, through government funding that came okay. through. That was COVID aid, basically. Cares. Um, but starting July 1st, we had to start the wait list back up. Oh, my. So, yeah. So there's still a, still a wait list for people who need the meals. So you've got 17 additional drivers that you need and you could use even more than that. Well, the way we look at it is 17 additional drivers times five, because most volunteers will take one route a Ah, week, right? I knew there was some math in there I was missing. (laughs) So, yeah, we need a lot Lot of drivers. Now, we do have some that are game to do more than one day, and we've really abused them, and we love them. Oh, don't say that. Don't say abuse them. (laughs) You've loved on them. (laughs) I'm trying to get you volunteers. And we do that. Like in summertime, like I said, when our snowbirds leave, we the the locals will use Mm -hmm. really heavy in the summer and then give them a break. Okay. When the snowbirds come back down. Is there any stipend for gas? Because, you know, I know that there are a lot of folks that are hoping to be called back to work, but right now they're not working right. and resources for them are really scarce. Right. There's not a stipend currently, but we do occasionally get like donations and those type of things where we can give out gas cards. OK. And we'll try to do that. But really being a volunteer, you're volunteering your time, mm-hmm. uh, your heart, of course. And your car and your gas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. And that's, but you know, take a smaller route, take one that's closer to home. Okay. Um, those type of things. So you guys are pretty flexible in that. So if indeed anyone listening is interested and has concerns, the best thing to do is call. Senior Resource Association. And we will put you in touch with our volunteer manager and get the ball rolling. Thank you. Let's take a short break so that our sponsors can have a earful or a mouthful. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about some of your other wonderful programs. Thank you. Why did the countdown stop? Because it's the countdown to Buzz TV channel 1098 Comcast Xfinity and it's here. Local content for Sebastian Vero and Fort Pierce. Tune in for local info, happenings and fun, including all the great Planet Vero TV shows from 8 to 10 a.m. and p.m. Dial in channel 1098 for Buzz TV on your Comcast Xfinity box and discover what the buzz is all about. Hi, I'm Vicki Soule. CEO of Treasure Coast Community Health. Treasure Coast Community Health has been serving Indian River County for 25 years. How did we get here? It took a commitment to you to provide you with the most affordable, high quality, integrated network of health care available anywhere. It took board certified doctors and dentists and a dedicated staff to ensure that you receive the best possible care. It took more locations to meet the need. And now TCCH has seven locations with the latest one conveniently located down the street from Cleveland Clinic Indian River Hospital. Our services are available to everyone, whether insured or not. And at TCCH, no one gets turned away due to an inability to pay. We rely on donations from generous benefactors to continue our much needed work. We accept Medicare, Medicaid, and almost all insurances. Call us at 772-257-8224 or visit us at tccchinc.org. Millennium Cremation Service now has three convenient locations. Visit Millennium Cremation Service in Sebastian, Vero Beach, and now their newest location in Port St. Lucie's Tradition. A simple cremation is very affordable for just $7.95. Locally owned and operated, Millennium Cremation Service is proud to be the Treasure Coast on-site crematory. Reach out when you are in need to Millennium Cremation Service, 772-999-5547. Online at MillenniumCremationService.com. Blue Dolphin Pools strives to provide quality service with a well-trained staff in the field and in the office. They want you to know that your pool or spa investment means much more to them than just another account. They believe you have entrusted them with your investment and they'll do their best to see that it stays in top condition. Blue Dolphin Pool has been in business over 35 years, setting them apart from the competition. Residential or commercial, Blue Dolphin will keep you in the swim. 567-5853. 
The Polo Grill has reopened. Yes, Polo Grill is back open. Located on Ocean Drive, Polo Grill is open seven days a week, 4 to 9 p.m. daily, serving the most amazing steaks from Rivera Ranch, fresh seafood and raw bar fare, all served in a stunningly beautiful restaurant by a professional team. Visit the website to make a COVID-friendly reservation or check out the new updated menu along with beautiful outdoor veranda seating. 231-4090. And welcome back to Community Conversations. This is Vicki Soule from Treasure Coast Community Health where we provide primary medical, dental, behavioral health, x-rays, pharmacy at reduced prices, you name it. We're sort of a one-stop shop for everyone regardless of your ability to pay. And we know that many people have had jobs up until COVID and are now struggling and pretty anxious. So please don't hesitate to give us a call, make an appointment. We'll take care of your needs um, from a physical, mental health, um, and even dental um, aspect now. So don't put your health care off. One of the great things about Treasure Coast, though, is that we have found how many wonderful community uh, associations we can make here. And one of those is through the Senior Resource Association. So welcome back, Shauna. Thank you very much. Shauna's in charge of many of the Senior Resource Association programs, actually everything except transportation. (laughs) Um, So we've been talking first about the Meals on Wheels program because it is highly needed these days as everyone has continued to um, watch for their own health care. It means that there are fewer drivers on the road delivering those meals. So again, what's the phone number if anyone's just tuning in and says, I could give an hour or two a week? It is 772-569-0760. That's wonderful. Now let's talk uh, shift gears, pivot, as they like to say Mm -hmm. now. Let's pivot (laughs) to a different program. Um, Tell us about um, the guardianship program, because that's a little fuzzy still for a lot of people in terms of the when, the where, the how, and why. Sure. It is actually the public guardianship program. And what that means is that there are people in our community that for usually health reasons generally um, will become incapacitated, which means they do not have the mental ability to make good decisions for themselves anymore or take care of themselves. And they could be our neighbors. They could be your neighbors. Yes, exactly. They're they, not necessarily the people that are in assisted living facilities. Okay. Generally not yet. I mean, usually mm-hmm. you become aware that they can't take care of themselves. They can't pay their bills anymore. They can't, there are things they can't do anymore. They have no idea they're not dressed, you know, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So. Um, basically they have to be adjudicated incapacitated, which means it has to go through the court system. There's an entire process. And the reason is, is because we don't like to do it because what happens once you're deemed incapacitated, they will take away your rights to make all your decisions and assign that to someone else. That's what a guardian is. Okay. And it's to make the best decisions for you and your health care, where you're living, sometimes who you can associate. Some people need to be protected from maybe family members who are abusing them or, you mm-hmm. know, those type of things. So mm-hmm. it depends upon the situation. Um, okay. And the age can be 18 up to 100 and something. Okay. Usually they're seniors okay. generally. But um, yes, yeah, so that program is government funded. We also get some grants locally to do it. It's a much needed situation. And do you get most of your referrals then out of a different agency? Our referrals come heavily from the hospital, people who they can't discharge because they know they don't have capacity. Okay. But we do also find community members who have started taking care of their neighbor. And then after a few years, it escalates to the point they realize they're in over their head mm-hmm. and this person needs a lot more help. So okay. um, any type of situation like that, we have a referral process. Okay. And again, they can just call just Senior call Resource us, yep. Association. Yes. Yes. And okay. we'll take care of it from there. Okay. So it can't be an anonymous online kind of thing. It's, it's really person to person out it of is. care and you, concern. You're going to have to fill out a form that gives us information about that person for them okay. to be considered to be on our wait list in, in process for us. Okay. So um, if, if you have a situation where you think someone needs help and, and you just need to report it, then what you need to do is call Adult Protective Services. Okay. And they, they will keep your confidential, confidentiality, but if you want to stay anonymous, you can. Okay. Um, but a lot of times they have questions to ask you, so that's mm-hmm. hard. Right. But adult Protective Services sounds worse than it is. They're just going to go in and see if this report has credence mm-hmm. and then move things forward to help the person from there if it does. Yeah, it really is a, a, a 
fine line to mm-hmm. walk between trying to help and not purposely, but sort of exaggerating the situation because you don't know. So right. they bring in trained professionals then to do that assessment Absolutely. is what you're saying. And there's this tricky area in, um, you know, there's elder abuse, right? But there's like mm-hmm. self-neglect. Mm-hmm. And a lot of seniors are self-neglecting, whether they know it or can help it. Right. That, you know, maybe you can put some support services in and that's no longer the case. So that's where they come in to see what's okay. going on. Okay. And, that's and a wonderful often they program. call us afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's wonderful to know that that resource is out there because we aren't all trained in different areas of social skills. Sure. Um, and you just... You know, you feel guilty if you don't do something and you see something that's sort of a red flag. But, you know, you call the police for a safety check. Well, you can see people walking around doesn't necessarily mean it's a great situation or that the police can necessarily help. Right. And the police know that Mm -hmm. Adult Protective Services needs to be included and they'll do the right thing, too. But I think, you know, it's important for the community to take care of their seniors. And it's important Mm -hmm. for you as a good neighbor to do those little things that you can do for someone you have to know your sustainable boundaries, however, and you have to understand when the situation's gotten to a point that you need help yeah. helping them. And then that's where these resources come into play. That's wonderful. Yeah. So we've got a couple of minutes left. Okay. Um, tell us about one other program then. Well, we have Senior Supportive Services, which I said we do information referral, but we also, in that program, guardianship falls sort of under it, but we do in-home services. So as seniors get older and they start to lose their ability to take care of their home or their person, Mm -hmm. um, we can bring in supportive services to keep them out of facility. And that's the whole goal of the program. And we get government funding for it. And that is their goal. They don't want you to have to go to facility. They want you to grow older in your home where you want to be. So we can bring in all sorts of services from uh, housekeeping, companionship, personal care, medication management, pest control, Wow. And Life Alert, those things that are yeah. going to help keep you in your home. So you have a wait list for that, too, I'm, I'm guessing. Most of our right? programs, <laughs> yes, have wait lists, yes. And that one, because it's 100% government funded currently, it, there is a wait list process. However, there's um, an assessment that you'll do, and it's pretty lengthy, and it'll give you a scoring. So it's not first come, first serve. Okay. It's according to need. Okay, um, that's why I was uh, trying to get correct. to, because... If you saw a decline in your parent and projected, well, they might need it in six months, Mm -hmm. the way they're going, they wouldn't necessarily need to sign up now. No, they wouldn't need to. Now, we could always start with something simple like Meals on Wheels, where you have someone knocking on their door five days a week and just checking on them. Uh And then we add services as we go. That's usually what we do. That's my, you know, starter program. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so no, that's not necessary at all. There is a wait list and they redo the assessment annually. Okay. So if something changes between assessments, you have to let us know because they will say there's a change of condition. They'll do an assessment sooner. Okay. Good, good yes. information to know. Yeah. Um, and it is really important to keep people in their home for as long as they can. When you said pest control, I was thinking about our um, lovely big um, palmetto bugs, but it could be bed bugs. It's often bed bugs, fleas, because they may have had uh, pets, pets they don't take care of. Okay. Our Meals on Wheels program will come in and try to help them with that, uh-huh. you know, feed their pet, get them the vet care okay. they need and groom them. Yeah. But if the house is infested, you have to do something about that too. So yeah. we'll come in and just try to keep them in their home. That's so, so you're sort of the mama hen for all of these types of things that senior men and women We need. try to be <laughs> in this county that's over, you know, 60% it's over 40 percent over the age of 60 at this yes. point so and that goes up two or three percentage points every year absolutely yeah so so you're an important member of the senior collaborative another um group that absolutely. is trying to we cannot do everything and we don't <laughs> and therefore there are other organizations that do what we might not do and we all collaborate to find the resources that the community needs so if what shauna said today about volunteering or helping out um, is close, but not the ringer on your chimes. Um, know that there are other ways to help the seniors in our community um, who need that care. Absolutely. And we don't all need it yet, um, but yet. someday. Yet is the key word is there. the point. <laughs> so, yet. Thank you so much for all you do, Shauna, and for you. sharing it with us of today. Of course. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So stay tuned next week. We'll have more interesting information about how you can maximize your life experiences here and to the better health in Indian River County. And have a great day.